The judge overseeing the trial of the man charged in the fatal stabbings of four University of Idaho students has agreed to move it out of the small city where the shocking crimes occurred, citing concerns about finding impartial jurors and whether the courthouse could accommodate the proceedings. In an order dated Friday, Idaho 2nd District Judge John C. Judge said extensive media coverage of the case, the spreading of misinformation on social media and statements by public officials suggesting defendant Brian Koberger's guilt made it doubtful he could receive a fair trial in Moscow, a university town of about 26,000 in northern Idaho. He did not specify where the trial would be moved. Instead, the Idaho Supreme Court will assign the venue and possibly a new judge as well. The trial is set for June 2025 and is expected to last three months. It is undisputed that there has been significant media coverage in this case throughout the state and nationally, Judge wrote. While some of the coverage has been neutral reporting of the court proceedings, much of the coverage has been sensationalized and prejudicial to Koberger. But even if enough impartial jurors could be selected to hear the case, the Lotta County Courthouse wouldn't be able to handle it, Judge said. It's too small to accommodate the needs of the lawyers and doesn't have enough clerks to oversee the selection of a jury from an expanded pool of some 6,000 residents. Koberger's defense team sought the change of venue, saying strong emotions in the close-knit community and constant news coverage will make it impossible to find an impartial jury in the small university town where the killings occurred. Prosecutors argued that any problems with potential bias could be resolved by simply calling a larger pool of potential jurors and questioning them carefully. They noted the inconvenience of forcing attorneys, witnesses and others to travel to a different city. Koberger, a former criminal justice student at Washington State University, which is across the state line in Pullman, faces four counts of murder in the deaths of Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernadal, Madison Mogan and Kaylee Goncalves. The four University of Idaho students were killed sometime in the early morning hours of November 13, 2022, in a rental house near the campus. Authorities have said that cell phone data or surveillance video shows that Koberger visited the victim's neighborhood at least a dozen times before the killings, that he traveled in the region that night, returning to Pullman along a roundabout route, and that his DNA was found at the crime scene. His lawyer said in a court filing he was merely out for a drive that night, as he often did to hike and run and or see the moon and stars. Police arrested Koberger six weeks after the killings at his parents' home in Pennsylvania, where he was spending winter break. Paramount is the concern for the right to a fair trial by a jury, by an impartial jury. Uh, the judge will consider whether there's a reasonable likelihood that pretrial publicity um, means that the defendant cannot obtain this right to fair trial guaranteed by the 6th and 14th Amendments. I would say this is probably professionally the most difficult decision I've ever had to make. Now, uh, criminal cases, especially cases involving homicides, will have publicity attached to them. Publicity alone is not enough for a change of ven venue. Rather, we're looking at the kind of case where the judge believes there's a reasonable likelihood that the person cannot get uh, a fair and impartial jury in that venue. It, the, the very messaging of this change of venue um, may also, you know, make some victims' families uh, uh, feel frustrated. Uh, and so there, there are, so there are a number of considerations to balance. But of course, one also has to balance, as the judge did in this case, um, whether or not there are resources to, to accommodate uh, the need uh, for calling through a uh, wider jury pool, for example, to find uh, jurors who can give this impartial trial. Everybody knows how prejudicial this media coverage is. Everybody knows that. And that's really the question the court has to answer today. 
has there been prejudicial media coverage that there's a reasonable likelihood that it impacts the impartiality of the jury, that it impacts Mr. Koberger from getting a fair trial? Um, so and so it's a, great, it's, a, it's a very fair question to say, so what's the point of moving if you've got national coverage of this case? And what the defense did in this case was they actually uh, got data that showed, yes, there's been a lot of coverage, but there has been especially co heavy coverage in the this very jurisdiction. Some Uh, there are there are a number of reasons. A huge reason uh, in a case with victims and surviving families is opposition by the survivors and the family. Right. So so, so the um, prosecutors often will consult with the vic the survivors and victims. And so if there is opposition, if there is concern about inconvenience, about messaging, about signaling, about the desire to have members of the community weigh in on a crime that happened in that community, um, that's certainly a uh, potentially heavy consideration.